the best way to think about it is think about the word stem and where the word stem comes from, or like why it's used to describe stem cells. And you have to think about the, um, the use of the word as a verb, where it means to originate, right? So stem cells are basically cells where other cells originate from. It, it comes down to what's going to be done with the human embryos that we have, that are generated. The first person that came to think about stem cells was a man who took out a napkin. He put the napkin on the table and he said, all people begin from one cell. Every human being on the planet starts as one cell, a fertilized egg. Embryonic stem cells, they come from a very, very early stage of development um, where the embryo is called a blastocyst. This is before it's even implanted into the uterus. Okay? There's maybe 100 cells. The key characteristic of embryonic stem cells is they have the ability to make all the types of cells in the body. Adult stem cells are sort of there to help regenerate our tissues. So for instance, our skin cells regenerate about every two weeks. Our liver cells, 200 to 500 days. Um, and so our adult stem cells are more differentiated and can only make certain types of tissue. We take um, somatic cells, which are cells that have fully differentiated, and then using a combination of proteins that was um, discovered by Yamanaka, um, we're able to turn these back into embryonic-like cells um, that can differentiate into multiple different cell types. One of the real advantages that embryonic stem cells could have is that um, they can be maintained and expanded um, um, to almost unlimited amounts so that they can be used. You can use them to, um, pro to develop models of uh, human systems to actually test the effects of drugs to try to understand how these systems work because you, you can start to um, make um, tissues, for example, skin. I am a professor of bioethics and medical humanities and of religious studies at Northwestern University. So bioethicist is, is someone who's been trained in either religious studies or philosophy, sometimes the law and sometimes medicine, to look at the activities of people doing science or doing medicine and evaluate these, these activities and figure out what's the right act and what makes it so. so let's say stem cells work. They haven't yet. It's important to know. If you have a heart attack, some of your heart cells die. If you could take out the dead cells and put in these, these new cells that matched but were early cardiac cells, they might be able to repair the, the heart itself. That was the dream of human embryonic stem cells. The original vision, it hasn't happened yet, right? And so there was all this urgency and we had to think about it right away. It turned out it was really hard. Nature is difficult, messy, complicated. Human beings you know, aren't as powerful <laughs> as we think we are. But the moral problem is, is it right to make an embryo or create an embryo and allow it to develop it never into a human person. Jamie Thompson at, at in University of Wisconsin found how to grow embryonic stem cells from humans in vitro in, in a dish. So it takes some woman someplace, some woman someplace to have eggs and to be able to get those eggs out of her body. That's not a simple process. She has to have hormones, she has to you know, have the eggs extracted. Were we treating women fairly? So that's an ethical question too. Should we um, allow women to undergo this just for the purposes of research? Or is that wrong? Who should we, you know, should we use women who only intend to have children? Or should we seek other women out? How should we do that? What's the, what's the fair process? With that in mind, uh, you know, in the mid-90s, um, there was very staunch opposition towards funding embryonic stem cell research, uh, mainly on the premise about what you're talking about, the controversy. Um, it really comes down to the question of when does life start? Um, so some people on, in the argument would really say that uh, life starts as soon as an egg and sperm cell you know, fertilize. Others would say, you know, once it's an embryo. And so that cutoff point is really unique, right? Um, in sort of how people view this argument. If you are a Catholic, a believing Catholic, you believe that human life begins at the moment of conception. That means when the sperm fertilizes the egg, there's a fully, fully present person, like a, a person with, with what they call full moral status. For instance, in Judaism and in Islam, abortion is permitted under some, some circumstances, where in Catholicism it never is. In in Judaism, you can do an abortion to save the life of the mother. 
And one of the reasons it's permitted is because the, the fetus doesn't have a moral status equal to the mother until the, until the fetus is a born child. So the moral status either begins then or doesn't. And that's just a yes and no question. And we can't agree on that because Christianity and Judaism and Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism don't even agree on, say, the divinity of Christ. So they're not going to agree on this very fundamental point, when, does you, when do you become a human person? So that's, that shows you what's called an incompatible, um, an incompatible moral decision. Where you just can't force the other person to agree with you because your belief systems drive you to very different answers around a fundamental question. You know, a lot of people are really interested in regenerative medicine um, and stem cells' abilities to you know, do some sort of healing directly on a person. And Um, Peyton Manning, obviously, probably with a bunch of doctors and team doctors, decided that stem cell uh, treatment was an option. They traveled overseas and actually had um, stem cells uh, injected into his neck. But you saw sort of the next couple seasons, um, you know, it, it definitely impacted his play in a positive way, and so he was able to sort of recoup. October 8th, 2013, <laughs> I was staged for, uh, they had lymphoma cancer, non-hostage. I uh, had a tumor in my chest, my stomach, both uh, kidneys, I mean both lungs was uh, filled with cancer and it was in my stomach, like I said, in my right kidney. And I was going up like three flights of stairs and I thought I was having a massive heart attack. And when I uh, grabbed my chest and thought I was dying, I bent over and like touched my toes and then I caught my breath and then I used my asthma pump and then when I got right, I had the guy who was taking me take me to the emergency room and they did a CAT scan and they found the tumors. Adult stem cells probably became a topic of constant research in the 50s maybe, when, when people figured out that there was a stem cell population in the bone marrow of the blood. I couldn't find a donor to give me the stem cells and then they used my own stem cells to put back into my body to cure me. Can you take an injectable? Um, you know, needle and syringe and actually inject stem cells into that damaged tissue and allow those cells in the right sort of chemical environment to regenerate and rebuild. So what they did, they hit me with the high dose of chemo to make sure there was no cancer in my body. The procedure couldn't sit no more than half an hour, 15, 20 minutes. They took them out through the blood and they was putting them back in through an IV. I remember seeing the bag full of pink cells. And it looked like blood, it really looked like just mixed in blood with water or something made it pink and it came down through the IV into my arm. It brought me back. <laughs>